Thank you all for giving up a busy spring afternoon to be with us here to dedicate St. Sebastian Church. I also want to thank you for your continuing support of the entire Bryant Park Development Project. Thanks to the vision of fine planners and architects like Jack and Leslie Rawlins. A tragically neglected part of San Francisco will soon become a showplace community of churches, schools, and apartment homes. So let us, with Father Hanley, Dedicate this cross, this symbol of new life for Bryant Park. Let us pray. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, be pleased to bless this cross, that it may be a saving help to mankind. Let it be the support of faith, an encouragement to good works, the redemption of souls. Let it be a consolation, a protection, a shield against the darts of the enemy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, bless this cross, by which you snatched the world from Satan's grasp, and on which you overcame by your suffering the tempter to sin, who rejoiced in the first man's fall in eating of the forbidden fruit. May this cross be hallowed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May all who kneel and pray before it in the name of our Father, find health in body and spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for coming.
found two more bodies this morning in the Every one of those bodies is totally drained of blood. She's doing her master's thesis on the is statistically reflected in urban crime, so she picks up a lot from the cops, the papers, and the prints. Throats were severed, torn right out of the victims. John, how about letting me sleep over? That's another interesting point, the economics of the killings. Mostly poor, disenfranchised, or known felons. Who cares about people like that? No one. His name is Anton Wojtek. I met him about a month ago. It started out as business, and then, wow! It's been four weeks I can't describe. Wonder, I feel wonderful. You know, Les, I used to think that being the hottest lady lawyer in San Francisco was where it was at. Now I look back and wonder how I could have lived that way. <laughs> it's a lovely party, John. Where's Leslie? Leslie is here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> Darling, this is our hostess, Leslie Rollins. Anton, it's very nice to meet you. It's my pleasure. I admire your collection, especially the Delacroix. May I ask where you acquired it? My husband, uh, John, bought it at an auction in Paris. It was our first anniversary. Oh, it's a perfect gift. Delacroix was quite some lover of women when he drew it. Her name is Inez. She was a model he shared with Elizabeth Boulanger after she married Cave. Inez? She was possible. It's incredible. When we had it researched, they said there was something written and rubbed out under the signature, but all they could make sense of were the impressions of the letters I and Z in the paper fiber. I was happy I could name the lady for you. Darling, we have to go. Of course. Oh, so early. I'm sorry, Les. We'd love to stay, but I'm in probate tomorrow, and I haven't done my homework. I'll get my things. I'll talk to him right now, I'll send it. John, love, beautiful party. As always, thank you. Bye, my love. I'll walk you. Thank you, John, for a delightful evening. And not, I confess, purely accidental. Oh, how's that? When Nicole told me about the party, I put off some London business to have a chance to meet you. I'm involved in a project that I think you'd find enormously exciting. Why don't we talk about it? Sometimes, sir. Sure, sure. But I must tell you, we've got our hands full with the Bryant Park project. Do you and Leslie enjoy the ballet? Very much. Well, let me arrange it. Fine. John, can I see you a minute? Uh, excuse me. Did you wake up hungry? No. You want some company? Yeah. I woke up and I missed you. You okay? Oh, pretty okay. Knowing her name change her? No. Yeah. I don't know. Does bring me back, though. Cost us what used to be a fortune in those days. We were living in that attic over on Avenue Lessup, surviving on noodles and sardines to pay for it. <laughs> wow. We had fun, Rons. Mm. We did. We still do. Yeah. Oh, babe.
Bob, I love you so much. I love you more than life. about that baby we've been talking about. Yeah. Let's do something about that baby we've been talking about. be here. Anton was really looking forward to this evening. Next time. Let's all go to North Beach for a sandwich, okay? Okay. You know, Anton wondered if in the event he couldn't make it, I might try talking you into a project of his. It's nothing long term, but it could turn out to be immeasurably important. Ooh, Cal Mysterioso. Do you remember the Heidecker estate? Of course. The land it used to be on is incorporated in the Bryant Park project. Didn't the entire family disappear mysteriously sometime in the late 1930s? Right. And between the time they disappeared and the estate fell into ruin, it was bought by proxy by a wealthy European family fleeing the Nazis. They never made it here. That's right, yes, yes. There was something about that in the title search. The wealthy European family was Anton Wojtek. He has no intention of tying up the land in litigation. He has no interest in it. However, before the family perished, Eight centuries of family heirlooms and treasures were smuggled out and shipped here to the Heidecker estate. Anton has shown me renderings of an underground complex, deep stone basements and tunnels where everything was supposedly stored, awaiting the family's arrival. But the estate is gone, demolished over 30 years ago. There's no way. Even if we knew where to dig, the sheer weight of the land and the rubble would have destroyed just about everything under it. Not to mention the cost. You see, you'd need experienced field archaeologists, mm. hand-digging crews. Uh... John Love. Money presents no problem. So besides being gorgeous and brilliant, he's filthy rich. He's quite comfortable. Oh, it's more complicated than that, Nicole. You need city and federal accountability for any changes in projects. I mean, frankly, I don't think he has a chance in hell to get the clearance for what he wants to do. Well, I want you to look at something. And that's only a partial list of the buried works. Donatello, Botticelli, Leda and the Swan, Rollins. That's a lost Da Vinci masterpiece. And dozens more thought to be lost or destroyed. It's Anton's single dream, recovering not only the art, but his roots. He was impressed with both of you, and he felt he could trust you to help him. Let's get the sandwich. I guess we'll have to give it a try. Either way, we're moving stone. An awful lot of stone. And this here seems to represent a double wall of some kind. Double walls? Sam, I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay, boss. Do the best you can. No renderings, no dimensions. This guy doesn't need us. He needs a psyche. What did you guys do? Well, we started out at the art museum had a group heart attack. Wouldn't let us out of the place. Everything we could remember from Nicole's list is accurate. And if those paintings are buried at the Heidegger estate, as Mr. Boytek seems to think... It's gonna knock the art world on its head. But that's not the best part. Everything listed, everything that Nicole called lost or destroyed, each of those paintings was looted. What? Stolen over a period of centuries. The most recent was a uh, Van Gogh Stolen from the old Kilpatrick Gallery on Park Avenue in 1921. Have you told Nicole about this? No. 
I wouldn't know what to say. It's a little frightening, I guess. Still at it, I see. Yeah. What's wrong, Harry? You need this to remember old times? Penny. I hung this around his neck 30 years ago. You guys sure went back. Bernier, disappearance. What was it, 46, 47? Right after the war. Say, how'd you figure this, Harry? Cost you a lift downtown. Mind if I keep this? Restorable? Like new. Any estimate yet on the dollar value? They stopped counting at 25 million. Why do they have to arrest him? DA's under pressure from the museum trustees. It's out of our hands, John. I never wanted to go this far. John, come on. 25 million bucks is far enough. Here, one of my guys fills this from the cops. Skull and bones belong to a one-time cop, a precinct captain, who retired from the department in the 1930s to become a priest. Maurice Bernier. Why do I know that name? Because he founded the original St. Sebastian's. Medical examiner figures a cellar fell down on him maybe 30 years ago, which explains why he disappeared, but it explains nothing about what he was doing down there. What else? He was looking at the pictures. <laughs> why didn't I think of that? I have a warrant from the district attorney's office issued for your arrest. Until you can satisfactorily prove ownership of these paintings, you're charged with conspiracy to commit grand theft. I'd like to read you your rights. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak with an attorney and have the attorney present during questioning. If you so desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be appointed for you without charge before questioning. If I'm wrong, if the district attorney is wrong, you and Nicole have our deepest apologies. I trusted you, Rollins, and that trust cost me everything I treasure. I assure you, you'll be repaid.
Hey, man. That's a nice coat. Soft. Let me touch, huh? You must have a lot of money, huh? Don't be afraid, man. I ain't gonna hurt you. when art of this magnitude turns up. I can recite case after case of it. If there's no doubt in my mind I'll be litigating claims for years. How much do you suppose Les told them? Not much. Just enough to convince ourselves we're not indulging the fantasies of a rich man. Let me handle the museum. John Love, I'm sorry. It isn't your fault, or Leslie's. Nicole, how much do you know about him? I mean, actually, no. Trust me. We do trust you. We care for you. You are a love. Both of you. But not to worry. Do me a favor. Next time something rattles you, will you call me first? I certainly will. Mm -hmm. Take care. You. Just put it in on the... Anton. I'm sorry I startled you. I see you're expecting someone else. A delivery, yes. May I come in? Oh, I'm going out. I'm meeting John and some friends. I promise I won't be more than a moment. I feel a need to reoffer my friendship after what happened. I'm only sorry John isn't here. John and I hoped that it would work itself out, but it wasn't what it seemed. It's just some terribly bizarre circumstances. I, uh, I tried to discuss it with Nicole, but I'm afraid our friendship is somewhat strained right now. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll talk to Nicole. Thank you. I 
feel so terrible about the whole thing. All I ever wanted to do was to love the both of you. I felt enormously drawn to you that night. Let me hold you. Oh, no, please. Please, please just for a moment. told me you've been coming down here. She's packing up the house. I can't go back there anymore. When we were kids, we used to talk about that tropical paradise someplace, you remember? Yeah. Quite some paradise we ended up on. Two tickets, John. Let's get out of here. Take a week, a month, anything you need. He killed her and mutilated her and nothing is being done about it. John, we've been through this. The cops have been over every inch of him. He never left his apartment that night. He had witnesses, including Nicole. She's a liar. No, John. She was killed by a psychopath who's been on a rampage for weeks. An animal. Look at me, John. I loved it, too. Doesn't matter a hell of a lot, does it?
John. I hear you. Oh, good. This is my fault as much as yours. I should have seen it coming. Too many good years make us forget what's inside us. What was the plan, John? Beat him up or beat him dead? Look, as much as you may want it now, I can't let you destroy yourself. I'm sorry, I got too many good memories for that. All right, look. What I want to do is call in a few markers and get this thing forgotten. But you've got to promise me you'll get help. You can't go this alone. Come on. You stay in my place tonight, okay? Okay. Okay. Come on. All right, with me. Bones, the architect guy, huh? Guess he's a little nuts since his wife got done. Get yourself a place in Florida, Harry. Maybe hook up with one of those rich widows you read about. Florida? You thinking about my health and welfare, or are we easing around to some polite way of getting rid of me? <laughs> you, you're a San Francisco institution, Harry. Take a load off. You'll get a stiff neck. Yeah. There's two more since Taryn to throw that at Rollins, woman. Why he took the pains to play with it the way he did is making the M.E. wonder. Maybe we got a copycat killer, too. Those throw killings in the 30s and the 40s, I'd hate to think we're developing a new epidemic. Excuse me, Harry. Hey, Captain, they checked Rawlins into Bay Psychiatric a couple hours ago. What now? He flipped, I guess. He took crosses, wooden stakes off him. Nobody could figure out what he was going to do with them. Uh, I think I'll take a ride up town. I'll see you there. Anytime, Harry. Rollins, John Ainsley Jr. Violent. Mr. Rollins, can you hear me? Dear God, give me my cross. Touch base with his private physician on his way up.
No. She invited me in, Rollins. It was so easy, so passionate. You pig, you filth. It's time, Rollins. <laughs> Do you hear it, Rollins? Get help. Not only do you intrude, but you insult as well. And stop waving that piece of junk at me. Remember my face. I'll never forget yours. Never. So be it. Mr. K. <laughs> Not so fast. Make it easy. Sip this one. Retired four years ago. Wife. Maureen. Beautiful woman. Yes. She passed away two years ago. Cancer. I'm sorry. I know how you must have felt. He called me Mr. K. What Maureen used to call me. Shocked the heck out of me. I don't mind telling her. It's my wife. You haven't gotten used to it yet. I have. <sighs> you up to talking? I've been watching you since it happened. Watching? None of this is easy to accept. By nature, I suppose, I'm a skeptic. It took me a long time to realize that if you truly accept the existence of God, then you also have to accept the reality of evil. Now, sit down. Look, you're not involved. I thank you. I'm grateful to you. But why don't we leave it that way? Sure, why don't we? But before you run off, just listen to a little story, okay? Come on, what do you got to lose? Come on, sit. I had a good friend once, Maurice Bernier. I know about Bernier. No, you know very little about Bernier. As fine and shrewd a cop as ever lived. And like I say, he was my friend. Anyway, back in 1939, we were assigned to a series of homicides in the Bryant Park area. The murders were by engorgement. The victim's throats were torn out. But there was never found a trace of blood at the crime scenes. That's right. Like the recent ones. Like your wife. Officially, we were looking for a homicidal maniac, but Bernier didn't see it that way. He'd always been religious. And in time, he came to believe that what we were looking for was... A vampire. Yes. Finally, it got so bad, he took an early retirement and entered the seminary. A few years later, he founded St. Sebastian's in Bryant Park, a stone's throw from the Heidecker estate, the place where he'd always sensed what he called that malevolent presence. 
if I had a buck for every malevolent presence south of Market Street. Anyway, I went to war. And when I came back, Bernier had vanished. Just dropped off the edge of the world. This was his. As I see it, he probably realized that Wojtek, or whatever he called himself then, was holed up in the Heidegger estate. And he must have trapped him into a showdown. Faced with his own destruction, Wojtek could have brought that whole place down on both of them, killing Bernier and burying himself for almost 40 years. I guess all that construction, along with the building of the new church, must have stirred things up. When he leaned over me and made me look into his eyes, I saw what my, my wife must have seen, and I tried to fight it with everything in me, just as I know she tried, but it was impossible. Those eyes were so hypnotic, I belonged to him. And for an instant, I wanted to. I'm going to kill him or die trying. It's that simple. Well, then you'll have to kill the both of us. No. Alone, neither one of us stands a chance. But together... Who knows? It's already begun, Rollins. We've both had our minor victories. He's not going to let us get away with that. Think. Try to think like he thinks. If you've got company, uh, no, 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 don't be silly. Come on in, come on in. Tommy, meet Mr. Rawlins. Hi. 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 Tommy Parker is a. Well, I had a son. This would be the boy. And this is the second most beautiful woman in the world, Andrea Parker. How do you do, Mr. Rawlins? Nice to meet you. You got time for a cup of coffee? No, I have to get to work. I'm late as it is. Look, Harry, are you sure it's no trouble? Because Mrs. Phillips. What's the trouble? This is a personal friend of mine. John and I have some stuff to talk over. It'll take the better part of the evening. Tommy can bunk down in his usual place. I don't know whether to marry her or adopt her. <laughs> well, as soon as you decide, you just let me know. Mr. Rollins, it's very nice meeting you. Oh, you be in bed by nine sharp, okay? Okay, Mom. Bye-bye. Why don't you freshen up while I get this guy settled? There's some shaving cream and a new razor in the medicine chest. Be all right, son. Okay, Tommy. Catch. <laughs> the text was by a German named Heidenreich. He described what he called the golden vampire. This vampire was a prince in what is now called Hungary. The earliest known account is from the 13th century. 700 years? Inconceivable. I still had my doubts until I read the Heidenreich book. My German's a little rough. The language he uses is dated. But I think it's him. The strength, the intellect, the royal bearing, those eyes. There was this particular story about a woman he took his pleasure. But if the spirit moves him, he can do it. Add to it what is probably limitless wealth accumulated over the centuries. We have one hell of an adversary. 
My guess is he'd have at least five or six sanctuaries scattered all over the city. I know I would. Which is why I want you to start checking casket companies in the morning. What we're looking for is a large purchase by one individual. What if we get lucky? Then we track down the location of each coffin. If we find him, we kill him. If we don't, we make the empty ones unusable. And even if we don't get them all, at least we can narrow his options. If we scare him, maybe he'll make a mistake or get even more dangerous. That's another reason we've got to stick together. What about the boy and his mother? That thing wouldn't hesitate for a second to use either of them against you. He's due to visit his father in Arizona next week. I'll ask Andrea to send him off right away. Can you get her to go too? I doubt it. But I'll try. The less people we have to watch out for... Most of the killings, with the exception of your wife, were in these areas. Bryant Park, North Beach, and the Fillmore. So that's where we concentrate our search. Might take weeks, assuming we survive that long. Do you believe in the power of God? I don't know. Well, if you never did before, believe in it now. It's our only hope. That'll be Andrea. Not a word about any of this to her. Hi. Tell me any problem? Sound asleep. Here, let me help you. Oh, thanks. I'm right down the hall. Yeah, he is. How about you? Any of your own? No. Can I buy you a cup of coffee? I'd love that. Hmm. Just make yourself comfortable. I'll just be a minute. After my divorce, and having him as a neighbor is probably the best thing that ever happened to Tommy and me. I work nights in a disco. Would you believe it if I told you that I am a certified librarian? <laughs> uh, anyway, the pay is better, and the hours give me more time to spend with Tommy. But I'd never be able to do it if it hadn't been for Harry. Because he's a... Friend, a uh, grandpa, the babysitter all rolled into one. I love him like.
Andrea. Hiya, Harry. Oh, I got worried when he didn't come back. Would you like some coffee? You should keep that door locked. It's almost ready. Would you look at that? That's the first nice guy who's been in this place for months, and he goes into a coma. He's exhausted. He's been through a lot lately. Uh, his name is John Rawlins. He lost his wife recently. Was he architect? That's right. Look, uh, I know Tommy's due to visit his dad in Arizona next week, but I want him to go tomorrow. Harry! And uh, I want you to go with him. No, you know I can't do that. Well, then at least send Tommy. Harry, what, what is all of this about? I can't tell you exactly. But please, just trust me. You're scaring me. I'm sorry. It's just, I, I've never seen you act like this before. Are Tommy and I in any kind of danger? N not specifically. But Rollins may be. And just as a precaution... I'd like you to at least send Tommy away. Okay. I've been meaning to give you this. It was my Marines. Harry, I couldn't. No, no please, she'd want you to take it. And it'd, it'd make me feel very good if you did. Nice piece of velvet you've got there. I used to keep my lock picks in it. Oh, yeah? Well, let's hope your current affairs are somewhat less suspect. Hardly. Do you mind telling me what you're going to do with all this? I thought I'd discount them over St. Pat's. Ha <laughs> <I, laughs> You're making wise at me. Indulge an old friend, Francis. It's a police matter now, isn't it? Come on now. <laughs> I can see that old twinkle in your eye. <laughs> I haven't seen that since before Maureen died. Old cops, Francis. They never rest. They never come to confession, either. Oh, Harry. Uh, I trust you won't do anything to embarrass us. The church, I mean. Count on it. Be a good boy, baby. I will, Mommy. Pointed at one end, Frank. What are you into these days? Camping? We only sell the licensed mortuaries. Nobody waltzes in off the street and buys a cast. I see. Thank you very much. Wait a minute. 
Occasionally, there is an error in inventory. How about five errors in inventory? What happened to the other five? Uh, the other five what, sir? Caskets, the five other caskets. We ordered ten of your presidential models, and we only received shipment on five. Oh, then you must be Mr., uh, Mr. That's Ray. right. And I don't mind telling you, at these prices, the family is a little bit more than upset at not receiving the full order. Needless to say, we're terribly sorry if there's been any... Problem. If it's needless to say, then don't say it. Just tell me who took the order. I'll take the appropriate action. Let me check the book. I didn't take that order myself. I swear the order was for five presidentials, not ten. Ah, here we are. I'm afraid the error is with you, Mr. Bernier. The order was for five. Mr. Bernier. Yes, Maurice Bernier. Isn't that you? Wait, I recall these models were for theatrical use. What is this? Who are you? Five caskets from the Gutsman Casket Company on February 17th. The dates coincide perfectly. They were all delivered to 635A Howard Street, paid for in cash by Maurice Bernier. Fine sense of humor, our friend. You did good. How about you? Then let's get going. Hold your horses. Don't think for a second those boxes are still at that Howard Street address. They were simply delivered there. We won't know unless we check it out, right? I mean, we could get lucky. The odds are against it. We'll check it out. Maybe we can get a line on where those coffins went from there. Eat. Left arm flat and six and seven and eight. Left leg bends. Two and three. Four, face the leg, flat, back, roll, down, and stay. Stretch, Harry, stretch. Who are you kidding? Stretch. That's it. Is it hurt? Yes. Good. All right, all right. Everybody rest. Everybody rest. Can I help you two? Yes, we were wondering if you have a key to the theater downstairs. I just rent the space up here. Well, how do we get in? The locks are ancient. Give it a show. Harry, as I said... Hey, John. Smell it. Stale. This place hasn't been used in years. in there. Don't look at his face. Put the stake square in the center of his chest and give it everything you've got. Are you ready? Oh my God, no. No, it's not Leslie. He's taunting you. Don't let him. Don't force her now. I can't do it. Let me. No. I have to. It's almost sundown. 
Hurry. Rest in peace. He's playing with us. Five steps ahead of us the whole way. Let's get going. I want to pick up at Andrea at work before that place closes. You don't think he'd... No, nah, it's too crowded. Vortex has got a public image to protect. Just for insurance, an old friend of mine is keeping an eye on her while she's working. interest you in this party. This guy is really great. He is young. He's loaded. At his last party, he tried to lay a OZ of coke on me. Do you believe that? I believe it, but no thanks. That's his car. Would you like a lift? That I'll take. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Next time, I promise. Okay, see you tomorrow. Uh, just give the drive. Ciao. Will you take me to Grant and Filbert Streets, please? Sorry about 
I'm sorry, you can't stop me. You've got to keep Harry going. Harry Kilcoyne, Inspector. Who's the officer in charge? Uh, Captain Desher, sir. Who is it? It was a P.I. by the name of Armis. Big guy. Got his neck snapped. doing here? Uh, who are you? What? Andrea! Andrea! Oh, that's my phone. Hello. Harry. Who is this? Do you remember my face? I'll never forget yours. In answer to the unasked. Yes, Harry, she is with me. If you touch her, just a stroke or two for the moment. But I am going to touch her, Harry. I promise you that. And she's going to love it. May God strike you dead. Oh, yes, Harry. But that's a story I'm saving for you. Good night. Harry! Harry, you said it yourself. Try and think like he thinks. She's still alive. Well, he wanted to play with her, but he didn't have enough time. Now, that gives us until tonight, Harry. Yeah. You were good with my tragedy, Harry. With your own, you're not so good. You look like a helpless old man. Don't handle me. Then go to bed. I'll do it myself. Think like he thinks, Harry. A prince, riches beyond compare, a property owner, but because he can't step one foot into daylight, who does his business for him, Harry? Nicole, I have to talk to you. I don't want to see anyone. Please, Nicole, it's me, John Rollins. What do you want? Your client, Mr. Wojtek, he's purchased several pieces of real estate recently. I have to know where. I'm sorry about Leslie. My God, what's happened to all of us? He's used you, Nicole, and he'll continue using you until there's nothing left. And then he'll kill you like he killed Leslie. You lied about being with him the night he killed her. Don't you see where that puts you? Help me! Oh. I can't. I can't help anyone. Not even myself. He makes me beg and crawl to him on my knees. And I can't help myself. You help me! In there. Call anyone who'll help you get packed and you get as far away from here as you can. Not a word to anybody, not a soul. Promise me. We may as well do the Knob Hill apartment. It's closest. You're familiar with the layout. You wouldn't be that careless, would you? Probably not. Still, we've got to hit every one of the places in here. Heidecker family holdings, every one of them. 
There's the mill, the old Heidecker Brewery on the Great Highway. We'll hit the mill second. We've already done the theater. And we have a problem. What a change. Geography. The brewery's down the coast, and the last property's up in Mendocino. If we have to hit them both, we might not make it. That's a long drive between them. We'll have to. We took Maurice Bengay. I'm not going to let him have that beer. Police business. I have a search warrant for Anton Wojtek. Oh, yeah. Let me call the manager. Where'd you get that search warrant? Here's my grocery list. Nice bluff. You must have been quite a cop in your day. I still am. property at Mendocino. If we guess wrong, we're facing a hell of a long drive. Your choice. The brewery is closest. Hang on.
sundowns at 533. acres there. There must be a house or a shack. Or a crypt. Estimated you too. You're the best in years. Centuries, in fact. Excellence deserves reward. Leave now, and I promise you'll be rid of me forever. Let her go. <laughs> She's free to leave. Anton, no. Enough. Now get out. Our little game was amusing for a while, but no more. It ends. Here. Now. One way or the other. Speak to this old fool, John, love. Tell him what's at stake if he persists. Only the life of an old man. No loved ones, Harry? Andrea? A little boy in Arizona? Think. I'm giving you an opportunity to leave. You've earned it. I pursue this madness further, and I warn you. 
Divest yourself of everyone, dear. Or I'll drain them drop by drop. No love. No bonds. No sanctuary. You'll live isolated until you begin feeding upon each other like rats. For what? <laughs> Ultimately, you'll have to lose. Yes! <laughs> Thank you. 